Now, I'm going to tell you an interesting story about a recession. And one of the biggest lessons I learned is sometimes it's all right to hold things. And I almost wish I had held some of the houses I lost on. Here's why. Mike, thank you for joining us for our Thought Leader Spotlight Series. I'm your host over here, Matt Camp, head of partnerships at Deal Machine. And on these, we really like to shine an industry spotlight on experts like yourself, hear your inspiring stories, and really educate the world on how you see it evolving. So uh, today, really excited to welcome on a uh, good friend, Mike Vizierl over there, a uh, real estate investor for 19 years. Um, you have a flawless record with lenders. It, you've completed all types of real estate transactions and hold over 400 doors currently with partnerships. Uh, and then yeah, also, it, was, it wasn't easy. I started out in a one bedroom apartment. There we go. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I know we like to to show off like, hey, here's how many doors you've got going on currently. But I love to hear about your journey along the way as well. So um, really, really excited to have you on, man. I uh, appreciate you taking the time out. I, I'm excited to be here. You know, Deal Machine is an excellent tool for um, investors. You know, I know it helps us get deals and it's, it's really a smart concept. And it's nice getting to know you and the team over the years. You guys are great, uh, great folks. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. I, and, um, you know, appreciate the shout out there, but, you know, kind of going into it, uh, you were hitting at it, your, your journey. Can you tell us more about that first deal and, you know, how you got into real estate and how you, how you started on this journey? So I thought I was, I was in the military for three years. And then when, when my military service, it was a three-year enlistment came to an end. I, I thought that, uh, you know, I, I'd be an importer because I read about it in Forbes. So I made a deal with a company and this goes to how I got into real estate. I made a deal with a uh, company overseas in China for 1500 little mini motorcycles then said I, I wanted a sample order of 30, used all my credit cards, my cash to pay for them. I, I sold them in about a month and a half. I got kicked out of a local mall, FSK mall three times, rolling them through. And then I took the money from that and I called a rent to own ad in a newspaper. And uh, the guy on the other line said, Mike, you sound like you'd make a much better real estate investor than Rang to own my house. And, you know, I was 20, 20, almost 21, 20 years old, you know, um, and, and he, t he tells me I could buy real estate, no money down. Now, I credit this to being voted most gullible in high school. I, I tend to believe in things. You know, some things don't work out, but some things do. So when he told me I could buy real estate, no money down, I believed him. And he told me to go to the local real estate associations. I started going to the local real estate associations, um, started asking people questions, called on my senior associates, uh, picked up a mentor on two deals. And I did my first deal. It was a division of proceeds where I made a deal with a homeowner for X for 103000 and I could make everything over X and I had time to fix it up. Used all my money I saved up. Plus borrowed seven thousand from someone, fixed the house up, sold it for two twenty. About six months later, did about eighty k on my first deal, and uh, never looked back. That's amazing, man. And I know, I mean, like I said, you've been doing it for you know nineteen years now, right? Eight, um, Eighteen and a half. Nineteen years is uh, in half. March, around March fifth. Yeah. So, so I do think. I mean, you you probably have a, a you know a good a better perspective than most in terms of. Like, I know you were went through the last recession. You, you know, I know you've talked about like the market at, at Collective Genius, the event we're at together. Can you maybe share a little bit of insight with our audience on like well, first how you're... I'm always learning. I, I learn new stuff every day. You know, I think yeah. life's like one grand learning process. But mm -hmm. I love the recession. A recession has saved me when I made bad hires after a recession and had things to fix. What I mean by that is when a recession happened, I started doing more deals. And then I started picking up rentals and you get so many good deals in a recession. I, I, I amassed a lot of equity. So at the beginning of the recession, I took a big loss. Um, I actually, my first investor, a guy by the name of Richard Greenwald, who actually taught me a lot about business. He had grown a company to um, 500 employees and they were in the book and uh, music uh, magazine business. They were actually the biggest distributor in the country of Christmas music at one time. He sold his company in 89. He said, Mike, you got to cut out the flips you're doing like a cancer and take your losses and you got to figure out how to do it. At the time, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like 22, 23 years old. Um, I maybe have around 80 grand in the bank and I got to take 400,000 in losses. How am I going to do it? I was doing a creative deal on a farm and I was able to get my first bank loan I ever got. Um, and I borrowed from uh, BB&T 
uh, 500,000, 550, and then from Bank of America, 100. So I owed 650. I paid off about 390 in losses, started the new market out with about 20 grand and a 25 grand a month overhead. And I moved into the farmhouse I leveraged. Now, that farmhouse went down in value to about 250,000. So I started out the new market with 350,000 negative equity, still paid my payments on time, didn't do a modification because they said I'd have to pay late. And within uh, two years, had a multi-million dollar net worth. Within four years, owned 100 rental units. About six months after I bought that farm deal, I started working with local banks. And, you know, and I realized when you work with local banks and you have a, a couple years experience, um, every local bank will give you X number of loans. So I just went to a lot of local banks. And started a relationship for like, you know, a half million in loans, a million in loans. And then from there, I, I gathered a nice start. So by the time I was 27, I had uh, I had 200 doors. By the time I was 33, I had over 450 doors. But 32, I had 450. But I did it all from negative equity. Now, I'm going to tell you an interesting story about a recession. And one of the biggest lessons I learned is sometimes it's all right to hold things. And I almost wish I had held some of the houses I lost on. Here's why. Uh, 19 Garlinger, I ended up holding. I had owed um, 150 on it. It did appraise it like 200. The value on it went down to forty thousand dollars, and I owed over 150 thousand. I held it, and about a year ago, I refinanced it, and I owed about thirty thousand, and it appraised at 160 thousand. Um, you know, this many years later. So, realist, there's two things I've learned. Number one, I chose to liquidate. All the houses I was flipping um, only had two rentals at, at the time. They were both creative finance deals. And uh, Garlinger was uh, one of them. It was a sub two um, with the homeowner. I eventually switched it and paid it down with a local bank. When, when I started working with banks a year later, it was still appraising high enough to get a 150 grand bank loan. Then it went to complete shit about 09. And, and you know, real estate here went down to about 40 grand. Now our area is coming up heavy today. A lot of new jobs. This recession isn't like the last recession, but uh, recessions are great. Good markets are great. I got I got a number one secret of any real estate investor I'm going to share. Are you ready for it? Go for it. No matter what the market is, there's deals and there's a way. Keep pivoting, keep moving, and you're going to make it. Love it. What, what are, uh, in terms of pivoting, like, you know, especially for newbies, uh, just getting into it the first time, like, are there any strategies right now that you're really you know, pivoting into? Or, you know, if you were starting over today as a newbie, like, how, how would you kind of think about how to get into this market for the first time? Um, well, you see, today, it's not like last recession. Last recession, all lending got cut off. So there was only local banks. National lenders are still lending to a high degree. And if you, even if you don't have much experience, like like no deals, they'll loan to you with like 20, 30% down if you have a plan. But if you have four or five deals experience or 10 deals experience, there's no excuse. And this option wasn't around back in the last recession. These national companies are like, you know, big companies, um, Dominion Financial, um, Anchor Loans. They're still lending and anybody can invest in real estate. But, you know, what I'd probably recommend is starting out a little easier, not going to the school of hard knocks like I did. Remember, I said when I was 21, I looked 12. Now I probably look older than my age. I just turned 39. But um, I'd recommend, you know, wholesaling, taking deals down creatively subject to, you know, I think 12 of my first 15 real estate deals were creative no money down deals. Before I actually worked with a bank, um, other than my personal home of a, of a farmhouse, I actually moved in because it was negative equity. Now it's an Airbnb, but I lived there a decade, you know, backing up to a mountain, like a thousand acres of like conservation land around it. It was, I, I had started buying farm animals, believe it or not. I had, I had over a hundred farm animals, just, you know, not that I needed more to do. Right. But um, I think out of my first 20 deals, um, that, that was the only one I got bank financing on and I had huge negative equity very quick. Do you, do you think, you know, one thing interesting is like you, you went through such a, a, you know, through the recession, through the tough time like that, through, you know, facing just, you know, facing something that can be really intimidating or, or, you know, impossible odds when you look at it, like how, how what's the mentality you had to kind of get through that? And like, do you have any tips there in terms of, mentality there. I mean, I might be going back to your, even your military training, I, I would think, but I, I've been very fortunate. 
I've had a tough road, but I've always paid my payments as agreed. I've always sold what I've needed to. And what I mean by that, even when I thought things were easy back in 15, I had, I had hired a series of the wrong people trying to create a business model that wasn't a hub and spoke, meaning I was a hub and everyone was a spokes. I didn't succeed at that until about a year ago. And that cost me, you know, selling a hundred units as I got through it. You know, it doesn't, it, it, what, all that matters, and I'm going to go back to a story in 2011. In 2011, I had an apartment building collapse. And at the time, the collapse would cost more money than I had in the bank. I had to put a couple hundred grand into it. The insurance company was denying me for no reason. You know, um, I did end up taking them to court. It was a year and a half later. They got a black mark on their record at the 11th hour when they had an hour left before they decided to go fight it again. Um, I took a settlement offer, you know, and insurance companies can be uh, rough ones. But I remember standing outside the building, a guy by the name of Tim Henry, a bank, a bank president. Actually, he was president of the first bank that took a chance on me, Central Bank. Um, we were standing out there and he said, Mike you know what the difference between you and other people is? Because he asked me to see the collapse. He said, you have a problem. You don't say anything. You don't ask us for favors. We don't hear about it. You put your head down and you get it done. And, you know, I would think that's it. You face forward. Generally, I do the opposite when uh, when something goes wrong or I get title cash. I do more deals because ultimately you figure out how to get them all done. And you get it done and you get over that hurdle. And if you have property, you sell it. Um, you just always do the right thing and uh, life seems to come to you. Love it, man. Um, you know, one thing you've mentioned a couple of times here is the bank bank financing and how you you know went about building that relationship, especially when you were new and hadn't done a deal before and like, you know, uh, are building that kind of initial relationship. Can you give people advice there on, you know, how to build relationships with banks, how to approach that, how to, how to have those conversations and really, you know, start to finance deals that way? You know, anybody just starting out in real estate, I'd recommend two banks. I'd recommend the bigger banks that do the loans, no docs that, that are still giving investors loans and, you know, will give you a big opportunity for the future. And I'd recommend local banks under 1 billion, especially under 500 million. At those banks, you know, you call, you talk to the president, you talk to the head of commercial, you say, here's my plan, here's what I'm going to do, you act with confidence. You tell them why you don't need the money because you can borrow from investors because bankers like lending to people that don't need the money. Shh. Don't, don't say I told you that. So you say, look, I really don't need the money. I can do, I, I can do this option with it. Um, and then generally, um, you know, they give you a chance, especially these local banks. Now, you're, you're going to have to have probably – a 680 plus credit score, but I'd recommend local banks starting out and I'd recommend national lenders, no docs. And if you don't have a credit score, you know, and you have no credit, you can get one of those prepaid visa cards, build credit pretty quick. Or if you have bad credit, I just start a partnership with someone, give them 1% or give them some percentage and use their credit, some kind of operating agreement where you get all the percentage, but they have over half on the LLC and pay them to use their credit or use private nice. lenders. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask, like, I mean, you know, on, on the private side as well, and, and in general, when you're thinking about fundraising, like, you know, what, what is your process going, you know, going about and finding money and can you can maybe talk about some lessons learned you've had? You no, know, this is kind process. of a crazy it's a subject you bring yeah. this up. I used to have more than I needed to buy. So for a long time, I had 8 million in private investors and three and a half million in bank line of credits. When I went to this whole phase where I was trying to not a phase, but when I went toward, through this whole growth period where I wanted not a hub and spoke business model, but an actual operation that could run without me, that, that took me five years. I thought it would take me a year, five and a half years. It cost me a lot. I wasn't flipping as many properties. I went from flipping, you know, 50, 70 properties a year, buying and selling more than that to just slowing down. So I, I, I gave up my three and a half million in credit lines, you know, partly because I was selling some properties on it, but partly because I didn't need them. Now I'm at a point where my one of my private investors is getting older. Another one has health complications, and that's four and a half million of my eight million private money. And I got a catalyst project in downtown Hagerstown, 43 luxury units. That's a state city federal partnership. So I'm putting bigger money into things. So that for the first time in years, I find myself raising money again. And you know, I personally guarantee I, I have a large amount of equity backing it. You know, I have. Four private lenders um, that will, you know, 
re- give, give me references galore. You know, I've always done the right thing. Also, I have letters from private lenders and banks showing I paid back over $40 million as I was supposed to. So my references are second to none, but it's, I feel like it's harder for me now because now I talk to people and I hit them with like everything I can do in my references. And I feel like I overwhelm them where when I was just, you know, a smaller investor, I said, Hey, here's what I'm looking to do. I can buy property at a hundred that's worth 200 or 120 that's worth 200. I'll take a loan of them on X. Here's my experience. I'll pay 10% on the money. I felt like people would start out with a hundred, 200,000 with me. And then, you know, after a period of years, we grew up to a million, $2 million in lending. So I'd recommend taking that approach. I, I used to, you know, I, sh- I showed them my business plan. I showed them my company work chart. And if you're in an apartment and you don't have a company, trust me, you do. Put your lawyer on there. Put your accountant on there. Put anybody that advises you on there. You know, come up with a little booklet and, you know, keep records of your deals. That's what I did. And that really got me rolling and got me started. And, you know, one thing leads to another and one thing grows into another. Then you get to where you're at today. And right. if you stick with anything in life, you're going to get to where you want to be tomorrow. Yeah. I love that mentality. I mean, one thing I know, you know, going through that process, one thing you've clearly become quite a master at is that, that kind of deal structure piece and really finding unique ways to structure deals. Can you maybe talk people through a little bit of a crash course there of how you think about structuring deals and, you know, how to, how to do that creatively, especially as a newbie. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with this where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Okay? And it's funny you said that because my third deal was 12231 Pleasant Valley Road. It was the farm deal that I leveraged. And at the beginning of that deal, when I I finished it, I looked like a genius. I temporarily had over a million bucks in equity until the market dropped. But I got that deal. I was on my third deal. I was in a one-bedroom apartment. My desk was closer to my chair or my bed was closer to my chair than that desk is today. I'd back my chair up and flip it over on the bed all the time when I was on my computer. You know, cramped little one-bedroom apartment. And a farmer calls me up and wants 800000 for his farm. So you're thinking a kid on his third deal with 60000 in his bank would, like, shy away from it. No. I said, sure, I'd like to buy your farm. And I went out there. I made a deal for six hundred, And I made a creative financing deal. And I, I just thought about how could it work? How can it work? I didn't think of like any set way somebody tries to train me to do it. I said, well, I can subdivide it. I can sell a piece of that towards my purchase price. I can give myself a timeline. The rest he could hold in a temporary mortgage at 5%, then I could easily refinance it. And I wrote the deal up. An attorney was super amazed at the time. But I think the reason I make deals easy and I, I can look at a big deal and, and come up with a way to do it is I keep it really simple. You know, I keep it super simple. I say, how can I do this? What part of it can I sell? What do I need to do to get here? I don't complicate it and I do it quickly. So, I mean, love let me yeah. put that in layman's terms. You see a deal, you want to buy it. How can you buy it? Can that homeowner lend you money? Can you sell a piece of that deal and then the homeowner lend you some money? Can you borrow the money from someone else? Can you write it up? Where there's a will, there's a way. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Yeah, I mean, that is a... That's a great message, especially going into the new year here uh, for people. I know I know there's quite a few people who are, you know, making that, uh, you know, that wanting to make that change in 2023 and, and you know, take that leap. So so one area, Mike, I know that you've talked about before and uh, that you have quite a strength in is the kind of working on government tax credits and using that as a source for funding as well. Can you maybe talk through when that could be applicable and, you know, the idea of potentially leveraging that? Um, you know, I'd love to hear lessons learned on that uh, as well. Okay, so hire a pro, hire a consultant, um, look at who approves the tax credits, invite them down to visit your project, and look for what tax credits you want. You know, historical tax credits last year in Maryland, there was 11 projects awarded out of 178 that applied. I was one of the 11 awarded, and I've been awarded historical tax credits before. Um, it's all about getting a consultant and having a project that makes a difference. Love it. What, um, let me, within Maryland, let me help you a little bit more, okay? There's, um, sorry, I cut myself. There's a, um, there, there's every city, they have a 10 year plan. And within that 10 year plan, it says what a city wants to get done. So if you find an historical project in that 10 year plan and you can get letters from the city supporting it, it makes it a lot easier. 
The other thing is a lot of times you can talk, if you have a project that's going to increase the tax base or pay for itself, you can get a grant from the city, even if they don't have one today or a program, you can work with them on it. You want to invite the representative out and you don't want to say what it does for you. You want to say what it does for them. Yep. I mean, I think that's a, you know, in terms of negotiation in, in, in general, it's a good tenant to have, right? Um, you know, one, one area I, I love to hear about a little bit more, Mike, too. I know you, in the past you've talked about um, how, how your approach uh, or your specific approach to really like finding uh, deals using drivers. And you've just been really successful with that in the past. I loved how you talked about how you recruited them, incentivized them, and like built up a driving team in the past. Our audience would love to hear that. Like, can you can you give so, the playbook there? So recruiting do? Uber drivers. So a long time ago to get real estate deals. At one point, I was getting about 70 referrals a month. And the people at Borders Bookstore used to laugh at me. I used to go in Borders back when they were still open. And whenever I saw more than three or four people in the line, I'd sit there and just read. I'd go up. I'd start, talk, I'd start a conversation with them, then start talking to everybody. And I'd say, hey, you know, do you guys ever drive by like a rundown house or for sale by owner? Everybody said, yeah, all the time. I'd say, well, how long does it take you to write that down? They'd say one minute. I was like, well, what if it took you five minutes apiece? I'm a real estate investor, even though I look 12 years old and I, live, and I'm, I look like I live in my mom's face. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And um, what I would tell them is, hey, I'm a real estate investor. And, um, you know, we look to buy houses that make sense. And a lot of what we buy are rundown houses for sale by owners. If you were for me 20 of them and you have five minutes in a piece, you're going to have two hours in that. My minimum for fee is $500. That means that's a couple hundred dollars an hour. I mean, that would be good, right? And, and they'd agree with me. And then, you know, usually one or two out of every 10 people or three would refer something. Then like one out of every 10 would start referring like six or seven a month. And whenever I got one of those, I'd buy them like a hundred dollar gift card or give them a hundred bucks. So it, for years in my career, I was bringing in 70 plus leads a month from, from regular people and not really needing to advertise. Now, I roll that into what you can do with Deal Machine. You can 100x that much simpler than sitting in line at Borders all day. Take 10 $5 Uber rides, literally, just to pitch Deal Machine to the driver and say, all you got to do is take a picture of it. We'll send a postcard out. Once you refer me five of them, we'll give you 100 bucks as long as they're good quality leads. And whenever we get a deal off it, we'll give you $500. And really, you can take 20 Ubers and before you know it, have 80 leads a month. There we go. Yeah, love that. I mean, I appreciate the the deal machine shout out in general, but yeah, oh, it's just like, great. We're, you know, we're always asking questions. Best apps out there to find yeah. deals at a low cost and to be pinpointed. There we go. Yeah, I I, I know we're we're asked all the time. You know, yeah, how do I how do I find drivers? How do I keep them engaged? How do I keep them incentivized? Like, I, I you know, you break it down, make it really easy for people. So, um, awesome, man. This has been fantastic. Can can you tell Mike if people want to connect with you? What's the best way to get in touch and get involved with you and yeah, I'd love to be able to have people connect. Um, well, yeah, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, Instagram's the best. It's Mike, the number two, the Fitz, M-I-K-E, number two, the T-H-E, Fitz, F-I-T-Z. And that's just because I, a lot of real estate investors message me through that. I don't build it up or put everything out there. That's a really good way to get a hold of me. And, um, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to make sure I answered fully all your questions, all the questions, Matt, you know, if you'd like me to touch again on creative financing, or you'd like me to touch on government grants, you know, I, I certainly can do that. I'd recommend, you know, once you're in your career, definitely look for those projects. You know, we're on our fourth one and the more you do, the easier it gets when you deliver and do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. It can take this longer. Was great. It can I mean, take more money, but you got to deliver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, this was great. We could definitely, I mean, we can do an entire, uh, you know, deep dive on each of those subjects. We, I'd love to have you on. We, we do live streams pretty often for our community as well. So I'd love to have you on one of those soon. Um, just focused on creative finance or, you know, grants or anything like that. So um, yeah, absolutely. This was phenomenal for today, but uh, would love to do a follow-up deep dive, Mike, if you're up for it too. So Yeah, no, I, I'd like that. I'd like to do some live streams. Like I mentioned before, now that I finally have my office running at a level, where I don't have to be here all the time. I have more time for this stuff. For years, I had hundreds and hundreds of people message me when they heard me on a podcast or, you know, they heard I coached Kong with Wholesale to Millions before he did real estate and got him into it. People hear of me and uh, they've reached out to me and I just had to say like politely, this isn't something I do, but, you know, I, I'm I, now I'm trying to spend more time sharing and like letting people know, hey, freedom is out there. What you want to do is out there. 
It's whether you think you can or think you can. You know, either way, you're right. So I think you can take action steps forward. And you know, I'm not I'm not trying to pitch Deal Machine j- just to pitch Deal Machine because I'm on the podcast here. You know, it's a great way to spend very little money, get pinpointed advertising, get quality leads, and really, really, you know, get started. If, if I started with Deal Machine in 2005, when I started the way I was doing it. Heck, I, I might have been retired 10 years ago. <laughs> I probably would have kept moving, but it, it is a really good app. You know, when you can, so you're sending a postcard out. Let's do the math here. You're spending about 50 cents, you know, a dollar to send a letter. And you're not spending hundreds or thousands in advertising. And who you're sending it to is a rundown house for sale by owner or somebody that's highly likely to get a deal from or somebody they know. The second part of that is don't just send out one postcard. Anybody you hit, you want to hit them in a sequence. What I would recommend is hitting them five times. I would do a postcard, postcard, letter, postcard, letter. Um, I would do it in that sequence. It's going to give you a much better opportunity to get the deal. And um, guys, you know, on a serious note, and, um, you know, I don't put everything out there I, I do or what I do for people, but I grew up with my parents struggling. Um, one of my biggest achievements was buying the last home my parents lost to foreclosure 20 couple years ago, 14 years ago, moving them back in it. And, you know, we really, my dad worked hard, you know, he worked three jobs, but uh, we, we grew up, you know, probably lower, lower um, middle class. And, you know, I've been able to do this without college and I've been able to like really not only do it for me, do it for a community. Uh, make a mark on the world, you know, take take vacant buildings that had been vacant for years and, and turn them around. And, you know, where do you want to be at in, you know, 30, 40 years? What do you want to remember? Do you want to remember what you could have done or what you did do? Each and every single person listening today, if I can do it, you can do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate you getting us fired up too. And, and you know, like you said, not shying away from hearing the word recession all the time. Like that's, you know, opportunity. It's great. To do this, so. I, I wish it was a worse yeah. recession. I have more buying opportunity. But no, I, yeah. I, I say that jokingly. Recessions aren't scary. You know, even the really bad recession last time, real estate works itself out. The people who stop investing in real estate and it, everybody wants to invest right now. Everybody I talk to wants to invest in real estate before the market went into recession. But the people that stop are the people that lose. The people that don't find a way are the people that don't gain. The people that move forward and the people that put their head down and keep doing it, you're going to succeed. And a lot of the people that didn't put their head down last time could have carried through, but it's because they didn't believe in themselves. They just didn't believe in the future because of the word recession. Recessions come and go. The The United States population doubles about every 25 years. Real estate, more than likely, will go up. You hold on, do it, stick with it. Right now is a great time to start in real estate in a recession because you're going to be buying it below market value, below market value. You know, and for those guys that are already investing in a recession, maybe they're worried, maybe their incomes went down. There's a hundred ways to make money in real estate. You can do it. Love it, man. Well, uh, that's a great note to end on. I, again, Mike, thank you so much for the time today. I'll, I'll make sure we link to your Instagram in the in the description too, so that way Mike we can to the to fits, M I K E, the number two, the fits. And I'm I'm promising me and Matt are going to do like three live streams in the next month, probably about two weeks out, two. two weeks of live streams. We'll do one in my home. Deal. A great yeah. library. Okay. I'm in. Man. <laughs> I'm in. Yes. Well, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll link to our free resources in the, in the description here too. But um, again, really enjoyed the conversation, Mike. Appreciate your time. Uh, everyone watching, you know, it's Matt Camp with Deal Machine again and happy deal finding.